My name is John Jacob. I am McAvoy Family Curator for Photography at SAM. What interests me about photography is that it's a medium that virtually everybody uses and in some ways virtually everybody understands. There are artists who use photographs in the museum setting. Of course, that's a lot of what you see. Families make photographs, and of course, doctors make photographs, the police make photographs, everybody makes photographs. So it's this incredibly broad thing that has so many different uses and so many different ways of understanding it. It's something that I love, that I can always be learning something new by looking at a way that somebody other than me uses or understands photography. It's rich and complex. The first place to look in a photograph, any photography teacher will tell you, is the frame. What is the limit that the photographer has placed on the scene that she or he is documenting, is representing? You could think of framing in terms of cropping. What has the photographer left out? or what is on the edge that's been brought in but not brought in completely. There's a photograph by Joanne Netherwood of Melissa Massaroni after her first communion. I love this picture for all of the many things that it does. It's an example of framing. On the left-hand side of the picture, she included the photographer who is taking a picture of this girl. She's also included on the right-hand side a piece of his equipment, which is the umbrella, the flash umbrella that bounces light onto her. And then more or less at the center is Melissa herself. So you have the photographer making a picture of a photographer, making a picture of this girl who is posed standing next to Christ. And this is her unique, special moment in her childhood. And at the same time, between her and the umbrella is a line of little girls all dressed identically. It's this wonderful moment of both the individual being pictured and the performance of sameness. Another aspect of photography in particular is depth of field. Depending on how you set up your camera lenses, you can see everything in the same depth essentially. Everything looks more or less the same clarity or focus. Or the photographer can choose to create a blur around everything except for one thing. There are so many choices that, that the photographer makes, and it's remarkable that most photographers work very, very quickly. They work by instinct in a way, but they also work by practice having made these decisions over and over and over again in their careers. The photography collection at SAM is a little over 8,000 works of art. They vary greatly. We have an excellent early American photography collection. Our earliest pieces are daguerreotypes, which is the first kind of photograph. With the earliest photography, you had to go to the studio to have your picture made. As photography becomes more complicated in its technologies, other possibilities, are created. Camera ownership, for example, becomes commonplace. Families begin to document themselves and their communities. Eventually, photography is a profession for many people, and those photographers document their communities' events, birthdays, their celebrations, their parades, and that becomes the image of a community. As a curator, one of the things that I have been struck by repeatedly throughout my career is when somebody says to me, I don't go to museums because I don't see myself in there. I think that the great value of photographs of ordinary folks is that we do see ourselves. It's important that we should see ourselves represented, especially in a national collection like SANS.